All right, one more example of Stokes theorem. In this case, we'll be looking at a paraboloid, and we're going to find the flux of this vector field right here, uh, y comma minus xz comma xz squared, and we're going to find the flux going upward. So that's me telling you what the um, uh, orientation is for this surface. Um, it's going to be going upward through this paraboloid. Uh, so it's an elliptical paraboloid, x squared plus 4y squared. And we're just going to be looking at that portion of the surface, which is under z equals 1. So just to get solid on what the heck is going on here, um, it's always nice to have a sketch. So we're going to have, and now let's actually figure this out. So um, if we look at where these two are equal, then we have uh, 1 is equal to x squared plus 4y squared. And so we can figure out what the intercepts are by saying, uh, let's hold, um, set x equal to 0 for a second then we're going to get um, y squared equals one fourth or y equals plus or minus a half so we're going to be here here and if we set y equal to zero then we get that x is plus or minus one so that's going to be here and here so this is the ellipse that we're talking about okay so um, we're going to be looking at this ellipse. Oh, except I just drew it stupidly the wrong direction. Sorry, this is the x-axis. There we go. And uh, then this is going to be, oops, this is going to be what it looks like when we lift it up to um, height one. So there we go. Call it there. Okay. So there's our surface. Oh, sorry. I just drew a cone, but it's a paraboloid. There we go. There we go. So I, I just sketched in the, the traces of the axes to help visualize it a little bit. Um, yeah, all right. Okay, so that's our, that's our guy. And so we're looking at the flux going uh, upward through this paraboloid. Um, so that's the orientation that we're interested in. And <clears throat> uh, we're going to do this using Stokes' theorem, converting the double integral over this surface of um, the curl into the um, circulation integral around the boundary of S. All right, so that's Stokes' theorem. And so now we can just, uh, we can we, to go to the next step, we need to have a parameterization for this path, um, this, this ellipse that we found over here. So I'm going to take uh, the usual, because I have no imagination, and actually because anything else makes it just more complicated, cosine t, and then we have to multiply the y-coordinate by 1 half, because it's an ellipse, not a circle. Uh, and then this whole curve takes place at the slice z equals 1. So we've got that guy. M. So let's see. So then our f of c of t, substituting in we're going to get um, minus one half sine t, and then we'll have um, minus cosine t, and then we'll have uh, cosine t. Look at that, those z's and z squares don't do a whole lot when z's just equal to one, right? Okay, and of course our dc is gonna be minus sine t one half cosine t zero dt. Um, so we can go ahead and continue from this integral and say that's going to be the integral now from zero to two pi in our parameterization. And we've got minus one half sine squared t minus one half cosine squared t plus zero. Coming, so that's just putting our dot product together times dt, and that boils down to just being uh, minus one half the integral zero to 
to pi um, <coughs> dt using good old Pythagoras. And that gives us minus pi, ta-da, the end. Now, if you want to go and try and set up a parameterization for this surface and compute the flux from scratch, you'll see it's a nightmare. So this makes it a handy tool, especially for stuff like electromagnetism, where looking for the flux through a surface like, like this is, is a, an important task.